All right, in this lesson of the graph for near, we are now going to do the mappings where we map the data coming back off the chain to the entities that we uh, defined in the last uh, lesson there. So our account and log entities. Uh, so if you remember back in um, a couple lessons ago in our subgraph.yaml, our manifest file, we defined or we said there was gonna be this receipt handler here uh, called handle receipt. So now we need to define what that actually looks like. Um, and remember, we could have also defined a block handler here if we were interested in block information, uh, but we're focused on handle receipt. So now that we have the handle receipt uh, defined in the manifest file, we need to uh, build it out in the mapping. So go under source, mapping, open that up. So we start this out by importing some some um, some code and, and prototype out the function. So we bring in these these methods here, and then our two entities from our schema file. Um, and then we open up the, the handle receipt function. Uh, it takes one argument receipt with a, a type of near dot uh, receipt with outcome, and it's this receipt with outcome piece which is which provides us with um, the outcome or the log as we'll see here shortly. Um, just briefly, nir has got two types of receipts, uh, action receipts or data receipts. Uh, data receipts contain data for an action receipt with the same receiver ID, uh, but we're not gonna go into detail on them because they're not supported by the graph. And what we're focused on here are action receipts. And they're the result of a transaction execution or another action receipt processing. Uh, they'll show up for one of the, actually eight actions that might occur on Near a function call, a transfer action, a stake action, add key action, a delete key action, create account action, or delete account action. I think I said eight, there's actually seven. Apologies there. Uh, but uh, of those, the function call action is the one that, that we're gonna be interested in uh, with this implementation. Um, because that's the one where um, for every function call that was called in the contract, if the developer put in a log, that's where it'll get returned and where we can have it indexed and then grab the, the information that's coming out of them. So what we do here is for each of the actions um, on this receipt, we loop through them and call this handle action function. The handle action takes, um, takes four arguments, which basically makes things available to us to, to play with, uh, but it's this outcome uh, near dot execution outcome one uh, that will um, contain the log, the log uh, array that we can deal with. All right. So basically, we'll step through this file and uh, and show how that gets implemented here. So once we call the handle action function, uh, first thing we do is make sure that the kind of of action that's being called is a function call, and if not, we'll just exit and and go on to the next thing. If it is a function call, then we're gonna create or instantiate a new account uh, entity or object. And then we are going to assign uh, the function call of that action to this variable here so we can do a comparison. Uh, so, and that's where we do this comparison next. We just, if statement, if the method name is equal to, in this case, put did, uh, which is the, the function that we want to listen to listen for in the contract. If it's equal to that, then we'll we'll start doing some processing here. So first thing we'll do is uh, get the receipt ID, which comes from the receipt uh, object there. And then we'll assign that to the signer ID of the account entity. So if we look back into our entities here, just to create the, the linkage, we have the account and the signer ID here. So as you can see, we're gonna start filling out the uh, mapping the data coming back to the uh, properties of each of these entities. All right, so moving on down. Um, now we're going to map the, the JSON formatted log that is coming out of the receipt um, to, to its properties. So we instantiate a new log um, entity 
And then we first make sure that there's actually a log there and it's not null. As I stated before, our outcome here with our near.execution outcome is where we find that um, in, in the first element of the array that's there. So assuming there is something, then we'll process some more. We assign the ID to the receipt signer ID. And then we start parsing out um, that JSON object that, that is returned in that log there. So uh, first we parse the, the top level one, the log itself, make sure it's an object. And then if it is, then we parse out the next object in there, which is the event JSON object. Um, and then turn that into an object. We loop through um, all the entries of that object or all the, the keys of it and compare them to the keys on the, the entity, entity that we created uh, for the log. And if they equal one, for instance, if standard equals standard, then it assigns the value of that key, the standard key to the, the property or the field on logs standard. And it does that for each of the other properties that are there so that if the log contains uh, something that maps to the entity, it populates it with the, the appropriate value. That uh, takes care of the event JSON piece. And then we go down into the, the next object that's in that JSON uh, string there and parse out that, that object and then do the same thing. Loop through each of the, each of the entries, comparing the keys, um, and then filling out the, the values or assigning the values to the appropriate fields. Key thing to note is make sure you're using the right uh, types here. Uh, so you take the value and then you have to convert it to uh, the type that it's expecting in the entity. So count ID was a string, did was a string, register is actually a big int. We need to change that to big int, and then owner is a string again. Once that's done, we've looped through the, the entire object. We save the, the log and then we push it onto the accounts uh, log entity. So this property here, we push it into this array uh, as the receipt could have multiple logs that we want to process. Anyway, it gets pushed into there. All right, and of course we had this else uh, right up the, the beginning. Uh, if the method name was, if the function call was not a method name to begin with, then it's not even gonna do this processing. So that's just handling that piece there. And so this is where you're going to implement um, the exercise in the lesson uh, and basically do what we just did here for the put did, put did uh, method uh, for the init method. And you wanna make sure you do it before this accounts.save piece here because um, that will ultimately save the account uh, entity and finish off the mapping. All right, so I'm going to fill in the solution here, like so. And our subgraph is now complete. So we've completed the manifest, we've completed the entities, and we've completed the mappings. So those three things together are our subgraph and we are now ready to deploy to the hosted service, which we'll cover in the next video.